I've been wanting to make this video for so long and I just I wasn't ready to open this part of my life up to anybody What's up fam? Today on Talk About It Tuesday, I want to talk about grief and loss. And I already know that I'm gonna cry in this video, so I'm warning you now. Just because I am a crier, I'm super vulnerable. So because the things that I um, am choosing to share with you today are things that I don't really talk about. Um, I'm very vulnerable and I let people see a lot of me, but there are still some things that I um, am not very open with for the simple fact that for a long time I just didn't know how to deal with it. Um, I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with it. In the name of mental health awareness, I think it's really important that we talk about these things because there are a lot of us that deal with things behind closed doors. There are a lot of us that deal with things alone. And um, I don't wanna do that anymore. I don't wanna keep dealing with things alone. I don't want you guys to feel like you're alone all the time. I just think that it's time that we start breaking these stigmas that we start um, opening our mouths and opening our hearts to the things that um, can become useful, can become an aid for us. So recently, I went on what was supposed to be a vacation to California. And although I did have vacationable moments and everything was really um, open and free for me, I knew from the moment that I got to the airport, that this wasn't gonna be a regular trip, that the things I was going to encounter on this trip were things that um, I more or less didn't wanna deal with. Now, when I got to California, um, initially I was going to drive straight to Las Vegas and go see my grandpa who's in the hospital. Um, or who was in the hospital rather, but um, my accountability partner in therapy was like, you're doing too much, you know? Hold on, hold on for a second, get yourself together, understand that you deserve um, clarity and peace as much as the rest of these people. So I was like, okay. Finally, I work up enough courage, I drive to Las Vegas, and um, I thought that I was good. Um, I thought that I was cool. I thought that whatever, you know, I thought that I knew what was going to happen when I got there. And by that, I meant I'm literally driving to Cal to Las Vegas to see my grandpa who was in the hospital, but I thought he was at home. So I'm like driving to my aunt's house. I'm literally there to see my grandpa and go back. Like I had no thought of that anything was gonna happen. That's not how this played out. I get to Las Vegas. Not only is my grandpa in the hospital and I can't go see him because it's past the hours and only one person can go a day because Rona and all this extra shit. Um, I run into my father. Now I haven't seen him in years. I haven't spoke to him in years. Uh, so I'm like, I'm already like, <sighs> okay, you've been in therapy for like two, three weeks. You have some tools, like let's try to use them. Um, and then she goes, we're going to Auntie G's house. Auntie G, um, which my auntie's real name is Grace. Let's start there. Um, because now that I'm recording this and I'm hearing myself say her name out loud, it really... Um, gives me a little bit of understanding as to why she is who she is. Uh, my auntie's name is Grace. And Grace is 
Anthony's mom. And Anthony was my cousin, who was also like my best friend, who was also like another brother to me. Um, we spent a lot of time together. We joked around all the time, like, um, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. And so I haven't been to Las Vegas. I haven't been to Henderson since Anthony passed away. In the summer of 2015, uh, my cousin and I had gone to visit Anthony for two weeks because previous to this, we had to go to Las Vegas and do a bunch of fa lava laves and stuff for the funeral for a funeral for my uncle. And Anthony was like super mad we couldn't hang out. And I'm like, well, Anthony, you're a boy and we're a girl. So we have to cook and clean and do everything. And all you have to fucking do is take out the trash. So please chill out, you know? So we promised him we'd come back, we'd spend some time with him, and we did. We came back uh, probably like a month later. We spent two weeks in Las Vegas. Um, we had hella fun. We also got in a super big fight with Anthony, um, like a super big fight because we accidentally left him at the casino. Um, it was like super misunderstanding. It was like this, it was stupid. It was so stupid, but Anthony held a grudge for like a day and a half, two days, three days. And his mom even sat us down and was like, Anthony, you need to stop being like this and blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, you guys need to apologize. And I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. Like it was a misunderstanding. It wasn't that big of a deal. But to him, it was the biggest freaking deal in the world. So, you know, we had this great old time in Las Vegas and we had made all these plans with Anthony and then two weeks later um anthony had a freak accident and from that moment on um he was on life support he um he left us and i thought i was okay i thought i was over it's been six years um pfft. I was wrong. I was so wrong. As soon as we hit the highway, we started driving from my, one aunt's house to the other aunt's house. My eyes filled up with tears. Um, I started to feel like I couldn't breathe. Um, everything I seen, everything, I was like, damn, we went here. We hung out there. We did this over there. We uh, met the homies over there. Like, Everything I seen reminded me of Anthony. And then we pull up to his mom's house. And I'm a wreck. And sometimes I think we depend on people to understand the things that we're going through. but they're not in touch the way that we are. And so um, we can't expect those things from them. So then I just sat in the car and I tried to get myself together. And then we walked in and my aunt kind of just like hugged me and just like walked away. I'm like, okay, this is about to be hella weird. So then I'm like, oh mama, can I use the bathroom? Hoping and praying that she does not tell me to go upstairs. But she's like, oh, you can use the bathroom. It's I know, you fucking lying. So you mean to tell me, not only do I have to be in my cousin's house, he's not here. I ain't been here in six years. I can't motherfucking breathe. All these old people is around trying to play bingo. And I'm literally eyes are full of like red, swollen, all the whole nine. And then... You want me to go upstairs and walk past your brother's bedroom, all these motherfucking pictures of him, and still try to be okay by the time I walk back downstairs, the Lord, the Lord had to carry me through that one because I literally sat in the bathroom for like an extra five minutes and just was crying. Like my cousin, my boy cousins were outside in the like game room. And so I'm like, I cannot. I cannot walk out there like that. 
I walk downstairs and my auntie sees me again and she meets me in the middle of the living room and hugs me so tight and I'm bawling. Like I am bawling. Um, and then I just, you know, decide to step outside and I ask my uncle, I'm like, hey, can I go to the side of the house? And he's like, yeah, you know, he, he knows, he knows. He understands, he sees the state I'm in and he knows. Um, and so I go sit and I have a little one-on-one -on -one session with the universe. Um, and it's weird because neither one of my cousins are there. One of my cousins passed away. The other one was diagnosed with severe mental health issues and um, is in and out of facilities. And so at the time when I was there, I could not see her because um, circumstances did not permit that. So I'm sitting there by myself alone, grieving. And my auntie walks over to me. She's like, I know where you would be. And she said, I never thought I'd see you again. And I looked her square in her face and I said, I never thought you wanted to see me again. I understand how hard it is because your last memories with your son are with me. Your last happy moments with your son are with me. Um, your last family picture is with me. That includes your son. Like She was like, ask your little cousin if she'll go get him for you. <clears throat> and at first, I was super hesitant because it's just like, I don't know. There were hella people there and, and I just, I don't know. But I asked her um, to go get him for me. And it finally felt like I was getting some closure. I'm going to insert a clip. In this clip, I was standing outside having a session. I ran to get my camera um, and I just wanted to record this um, in the moment and feel and be. I'm at our spot. You're not here. It's so weird being here without you. It's so weird. Standing here, smoking without you. I've just seen your parents for the first time in six years. Um, I met your little sister. Your dad's good. He's still a clown. It'll never be the same, but I'm about to go inside and see you for the first time in six years. So... I love you, Anthony, and it's always Camp 702, always. This whole thing with grief and loss, um, the first thing that I'm going to say is don't ever let anybody tell you how to handle the pain. I have lost so many people in my life, and I don't just mean people who like, Oh, like my super distant uncle that like I seen once a year. No, I'm talking about immediate people in my life. People who I would not be who I am if it wasn't for them. People who I felt like should have been here much longer than they were. Even though like my grandparents were here for a long time, like it's still... It's still like a shot to the heart. Like I feel like they should have been here for so many things. So don't ever let anybody tell you how to deal with it. Don't just deal with everything internally. A lot of the times the reasons why we never get past a certain point in our healing is because we don't speak about it. We don't let it go into the universe. We don't allow the universe to surround us with the love and the compassion and the healing that we need because we don't speak about it. We don't speak to the universe. We don't ask for help. Um, my third thing I would say is find somebody you trust and talk to them. 
maybe it's not a matter of you talking to them about how sad you are or how um uh or how you're dealing maybe it's just you telling them that these are all the good things that happen these are all the lessons that this person taught me it doesn't always have to be like you telling someone like you're super sad you cry all the time because although i am a super vulnerable person and i show a lot of my insides on the outsides I still don't like when people see me cry. I still don't like um, for people to see me cry in sadness or in anger or any of those things. The next thing I would say about grief and loss is be careful. Be careful to not let those things consume you. Um, be careful to not let those things take you to a place you really don't want to be. Um, full transparency, I got to a point where I had lost so many people that I felt numb. No amount of compassion, no amount of understanding no amount of holding space for me could anybody give me for me to feel again i was i was becoming numb i was going through the motions i was just doing whatever i had to do to survive i was in survival mode for a long time and i still cry when i think about him Because that was my brother. That was my real life brother. Um, when I was talking to my auntie in Las Vegas, she was like, you know, Olivia, I'm so proud of you. I never, like, who would have ever thought that you would have been cooking? Who would have ever thought that um, this would be, you know, the thing that you do? And I'm like, I know, like... I know and then she was like you know if your brother was here he'd be asking you to cook every chance he got I said I know auntie I literally know the way Anthony would walk in a room when he smelled food and rub his belly literally I see it in my head all the time and the thing that I always remember is those little moments are what keeps me going. Those little memories and just thinking about what would be if he was here is what keeps me like, all right, dude, we're sad, but <clears throat> we can't be sad for too long because... In, in my sadness and in my unwant and unwillingness to do things, to live my life, I am affecting other people. And yeah, of course, there's other people who can feed the homeless. There's other people who can do what I do. But there's nobody that does it the way that I do it. There's nobody that does it with the heart that I do it with. And so I have to continuously remind myself like, <clears throat> we're stronger because we went through those things losing anthony made me so much stronger than i ever thought i could be that goes for every single person i've lost that goes for every single person anybody who is watching this video has lost like remember the good times remember the things that would make that person smile remember the things about you that those people loved and capitalize on it also another thing is look out for the people in your life now that resemble the things that those people were to you it wasn't until 
I went to Las Vegas that I understood why two years later these people were put into my life. Um, I already told Trey this. Um, I haven't told Hanak this, but they don't know what their presence does to my soul. I never thought I would meet other people that I interacted with the same exact way that I interacted with Anthony. If you know them, then you know. I want to read you guys a little poem that I wrote for Anthony uh, when he passed away. I wrote this poem when Anthony passed away. Then I had to go back to school. And for a year, I, I had wrote my auntie a letter and I wrote this poem down in a letter. I never sent it to her, ever. So she's never, ever heard this. Um, but it goes like this. It was an accident, but you would never let it go. Though you never spoke any words or your feelings, we would know. We knew how mad you were by the silence in the air. We knew how much you couldn't stand us, sort of giving us just a blank stare. Like, how could you do this? How could you do this to me? How dare you ever leave Anthony Atuatasi? No one has ever left me. No one ever will. This is the last time I'm going anywhere with you guys. I'm so serious, like for real. The silence dragged on. It was low key kind of uncomfortable. It actually got kind of annoying. Just like you, you know? Then moms got fed up and we had to talk it out. You really wasn't feeling that. It was whatever, over, done, and out. But by the end of that night, nothing mattered anymore. Because we know family's important and you came knocking at the door. Well, actually, you sent a text to see if we were okay. We came to swoop you up. All the drama just gone away. You still came with us places. You were still down the ride. Fight after fight, you were still by our side. From the hookah bar to the pool and back and forth again, taking flight after flight, the good times never end. Memory after memory, we promised we'd make all we could. Any way we seen fit, mainly doing things we shouldn't instead of things we should. But I'd do it all over again in a heartbeat. It was the best trip I ever had. No, hammer, no matter how many times you called me ugly, I could never stay mad because you're annoying and you always will be. But life would have never been the same without Anthony Mulilangi Moli Atuatasi. I love you so much, brother. I hope your siblings know how much I love them and I hope they know that I'm always going to be here for them. Um... Anybody who's dealing with grief, sorrow, loss, I am here for you. Whatever you need. If you want to talk, we can talk. If you don't want to talk, we don't have to talk. If you feel like you need a shoulder to cry on, I got one right here and I got another one over here. Um, don't keep going through it alone. It's not easy. Does it get easier? I'm not sure. I don't know. Does it get more bearable? If you allow it. Um, I know there are so many people in this world that have lost someone. Um, whether it be a parent, a family member, a friend, a child. Um, and it is really important that we begin to deal with these things. Because if we don't, we are never going to be able to fully be the people that those people knew that we could be. With this being the month of mental health, I encourage you to do whatever it takes to heal yourself. If that means cutting yourself out of situations that don't serve you anymore, let it go. If it means... uh going back to the basics to understand what it is that you need in terms of fulfillment, do it. 
I love you guys. Y'all know the drill. Live intentionally. Do something nice for others. Do something nice for yourself. Have a blessed day. When I say if you need anything, call me. I mean it. Not just to talk. Not just for food. But for anything. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.